All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Premier Esports Academy web series. My name's Dan Himmelstein, founder and brain coach at Premier Esports Academy. And today we're going to be talking about our third part of the flow experience, which is going to be clear goals and unambiguous feedback. So for those of you who have been watching, thank you so much for bearing with me last week while I was away traveling. Uh, I was able to attend really cool expo, college esports expo in Missouri. Um, so make sure you go check out Southwest Baptist University. They're doing some really cool things over there. And I was also able to post my video of my DreamHack Austin uh, presentation that I was unfortunately not able to give because of some circumstances outside of my power. So make sure you go check that out as well. Um, so, and if you haven't yet, make sure you check out the first two videos of the flow experience. The first one on challenge skill balance, that one's going to be absolutely essential, uh, especially because it's giving you guys something that's always in your power, which is adjusting the challenge, the perceived challenge versus your perceived skill. Really, really cool video. Uh, the second part of the flow experience series is action awareness merging. So make sure you check that out. That's really becoming um, very aware of the actions that you are putting forth and making sure that your mind is merging with those actions. So basically you are putting out the actions that your brain is saying that you want to do. So it's making that fluid motion. So this week, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about clear goals and unambiguous feedback. So um, I'm giving you guys a presentation. I got some good feedback on that, so I think we'll stick with that. Give you guys a little context, something to write down as well. Um, mostly these are just going to be talking points to help guide through the presentation, but uh, hopefully it provides a little bit more of than just me talking at you. So when we're talking about clear goals, what are we talking about? So winning as a goal, it's nice. We all like to win. Um, but as I'm sure I mentioned in a couple of my other videos, um, winning is not the only goal. So if all we're thinking about is winning, it's not allowing us to enjoy the small wins. So those might, moments might be winning a big team fight, getting a team wipe, or even a really great 1v1. So if all of our attention is focused on this overarching goal of winning, then we're going to be losing attention on those other pieces. So setting clear goals. Attention has to be used wisely, like I said. So, um, you know, we have to make sure that we are setting goals around smaller, smaller tasks as well. So positioning, um, communicating, even target accuracy, things of that nature. So uh, these moment to moment goals are really what's going to drive us to success. We have to make sure that we're setting these moment to moment things so that we know how to guide our performance. Um, and we can use that as a blueprint, which is what I'll, what I'll talk about next. So when we're setting these goals, these goals have to be set very far in advance. So that way we're not sitting there during our performance saying, okay, well, what do I need to do next? What's next? What's next? We should already have a very clear path, a very clear understanding of what that looks like. And that's going to be that blueprint piece. So this is not the wrong way there. So this is that blueprint piece we're talking about, the moment-to-moment -moment awareness. Now, one of the best ways to get that moment-to-moment -moment awareness is visualizing this in advance and knowing what those goals are. So, you know, this is going to help direct our focus and let us know what we need to be doing. I mean, we have to know what's going to be able to define a successful performance from moment to moment. So there can be multiple moment to moment goals, whether that's, um, you know, in a certain phase, we have to make sure we're communicating certain things. We have to make sure we're in the right positions. We have to make sure that we're getting the frags that we need, um, that we're picking up the kills that we need, that we're getting the picks. So uh, these moment to moment goals, it's not just going to be one at a time. So that's why it's super important to be planning this in advance so that we know what to expect and what to do. So who's ever said the phrase, um, I knew exactly what I needed to do. So, you know, I knew exactly what I needed to do. There's not much better feeling than completing a task successfully and saying, yeah, I mean, I had my game plan all laid out. I knew exactly what I had to do and I went there and I executed it. So that's going to be that type of flow state that we're looking for. Um, making sure that we have good preparation with our goals, our, our really clear goals um, leading up to that event, leading up to that performance is going to help us uh, achieve success. So 
using that as a blueprint, um, then we want to get into our second piece of today's talk, which is unambiguous feedback. So unambiguous feedback um, really, you know, obviously is a very clear feedback. We need, it's impossible to know what you're doing uh, without feedback. So whether that be, um, we know when our shots hit, so the game will actually give us a particular sound or a particular uh, look on the crosshair that will indicate that our shot was hit. So that's feedback coming from the game. Now we can um, <clears throat> take a look at this type of feedback to help guide us through our performance. You know, we have to know if we're completing our tasks, we have to know if we are completing those moment by moment goals. So making sure that we are checking in, um, you know, to see if we're actually completing those goals efficiently. So I'm winning or losing, that's the type of uh, ambiguous feedback that, the, that we want to remove. We want to be able to remove that um, I'm winning or losing piece as, as, you know, just our entire direction. So, um, you know, it does provide us with a little direction, whether we're winning or losing, you know, we could say, okay, cool, keep maintaining this, or, um, you know, we got to pick up the slack. But it's that side piece that is the important part is we got to pick up the slack, not I'm losing. Um, we could pick up slack when we're winning. You know, we can pick up or, uh, you know, we can make sure that if we're losing and we're doing something right to keep that going. So uh, the winning and losing piece actually isn't the really important piece to what we're talking about. So why the moment to moment? Um, something that gets asked a lot, you know, a lot of people think that that takes a little attention off and it's a bit of a catch 22, but the moment to moment breaks it up so that we can noticeably start to achieve that goal. We could start to get to our, our overall goal. Um, <clears throat> you know, whether that be um, this particular phase of the game, what those moment to moment goals are. So breaking up that journey is going to allow us to know that we are taking the right steps to get to that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense there. <clears throat> so with feedback, there's a lot of different sources of feedback. Some can be internal within us and some can be external. So on the right, you'll see fans. The crowd often provides us with feedback. Now, is the crowd always right? Is the crowd always rooting for us? No. So what does that tell us? That tells us that we need to be very picky about the types of feedback we receive. So there's that internal and external piece. Some of it's gonna be good, some of it's gonna be bad. Some other examples of external would be coaches, you know, who's, who's had a coach. Um, you know, some games allow coaches to have in-game communication or communication between rounds. So that's something really important to help guide you through these steps and to help you know if you're achieving those goals or not. So my biggest recommendation here is to make a plan. You know, some sources of feedback are gonna be great and some sources aren't gonna be so great. So making sure that we make a plan to say, these are the types of feedback um, sources that I'm going to accept and to really make sure that I focus on. And these are the ones that I'm going to phase out, you know, using your team, another great source of feedback. Although sometimes our team can be very toxic. You know, we all, we've all had that teammate before, whether it being quick player, actually in an organized team where uh, it just didn't seem like the feedback that you were receiving was great. And I'm not saying ignore that feedback. Don't get me wrong. But when we're talking about influencing flow um, and in terms of, you know, making sure we're achieving that moment to moment, you know, we could take our opponent or our, our teammates feedback afterwards and um, really internalize it, especially if it's a teammate that, you know, we're a little skeptical about the feedback that we're getting um, to make sure to then decipher that and use it to your advantage if you decide to. So really we want to build this self-awareness piece the self-awareness piece is absolutely huge um, not only will it help with the clear goals it'll help with your unambiguous feedback and it will also help with your challenge skill balance like i mentioned earlier that challenge skill balance back in video one of uh this flow series so the self-awareness piece i can't emphasize enough how important it is you have to be able to reflect on your own performances uh, you have to be able to see, you know, what goals you're achieving and um, the way in which you're achieving them. So 
Um, <clears throat> that's going to be the, the main hunk of this week's video is making sure that we're setting those clear goals in advance, making a roadmap and using that as a blueprint, and then making sure that we're checking in during our performance with those goals, but not taking a ton of attention away from the task at hand. And we'll get into that during, uh, I believe it'll be our next video where we're going to really be focusing on um, absorption in the task at hand. So absorbing yourself in the task at hand is absolutely essential. As I said in the beginning of the video, attention's a limited capacity. So we have to make sure that we're spending that attention on all the right things. So this is where the tricky balance comes into play. Um, and the one thing I mentioned, I told you I'll probably mention this in every, uh, every video that I've made in the flow series. The more we try and influence flow, the more we deliberately influence flow during a performance, the less likely it is to happen because we're focusing on getting into that flow state when really it's all about the preparation up to the up to the performance. If we get the proper preparation up to the performance, you know, that's our feedback plans, that's our unambiguous, uh, that's our unambiguous feedback, that's our clear goals, um, our challenge skill balance, then we're going to be in a much better position to reach that flow state. So with that, I'll leave you guys. Uh, make sure you check out the first video in our series. I'll just throw up a little bit of contact information there. Make sure you check out the first and second video of the series, the flow series. Uh, those are going to be super important as well. You know, these all kind of play into each other in order to help influence flow. So it's going to be super important. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Handles on the bottom right hand of your screen. It is at dhims underscore esports. Um, give me a follow for some more exclusive content and make sure you su subscribe to the YouTube channel to make sure you know when new videos are coming out. So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to next time.